Hello and welcome. In this presentation, you will learn how to offer childcare as a benefit to employees of your childcare business. The information contained here has been prepared by Civitas Strategies and is not intended to constitute legal, tax, or financial advice. The Civitas Strategies team has used reasonable efforts in collecting, preparing, and providing this information, but does not guarantee its accuracy, completeness, adequacy, or currency. The publication and distribution of this information are not intended to create, and receipt does not constitute, an attorney-client or any other advisory relationship. Reproduction of this information is expressly prohibited. Only non-commercial uses of this work are permitted. In today's competitive business landscape, offering meaningful benefits can significantly enhance employee satisfaction and retention. For child care business owners, providing free child care to their own employees is not just a perk, but a powerful statement of support and understanding of their needs. In today's conversation, we will discuss the benefits of covering child care costs and how you can reduce the cost of child care for your employees. Employer provided child care support can have multiple benefits. First, it provides crucial financial relief for families, reducing the weight of childcare expenses and allowing parents to allocate resources to other essential needs. Second, there are multiple impacts on recruitment and retention by providing employees with improved work-life balance, competitive benefits, and reduced absenteeism and stress. Let's explore three viable approaches to achieve this. Through Dependent Care Flexible Spending Accounts, or FSAs, Direct payment is a taxable fringe benefit and in-kind provision of child care services. The first option is utilizing Dependent Care Flexible Spending Accounts, or FSAs. Dependent Care FSAs are a versatile option for employees to manage child care costs. By allocating pre-tax earnings into these accounts, employees can pay for eligible dependent care expenses, which can range from full-day child care to after-school programs. While primarily funded by employees, employers can also contribute, increasing the benefits appeal. Typically, the Dependent Care FSA funds can cover the care of expenses for children under the age of 13. However, it can also cover expenses for a spouse or a dependent of any age, including children, but also parents, who is physically or mentally incapable of self-care. The major advantage of Dependent Care FSAs lies in their tax benefits. Employees' contributions decrease their taxable income. The numbers can add up. In 2024, the annual contribution limit is $5,000 for individuals or married couples filing jointly and $2,500 for a married person filing separately. For employers, the attractiveness of dependent care FSAs is in their dual role as a tax-efficient benefit, since the contributions and costs are deductible and a tool for increasing employee satisfaction by addressing a major family concern. Affordable care. However, there are two issues with dependent care FSAs. First, typically they take time and money to launch and maintain. Second, there is a use it or lose it policy, which means that any unused funds at the end of the calendar year are forfeited. Another approach is for employers to directly pay for their employees' child care expenses. In this method, typically the employer provides a set amount each pay period for child care, such as $200 a month. This direct payment method results in a tax deduction for employers. Employers also have greater discretion over how the money is spent. For example, they could limit contributions only to children under 5. Employees often like this option because of its simplicity and also because it doesn't depend on making their own contributions to a formal vehicle like a dependent care FSA. However, the challenge with direct payment is that these kinds of benefits are considered taxable. So, the employee does not receive a tax benefit and the payments are treated the same as any other wages. The third option involves employers providing childcare services directly to their employees for no or reduced cost. This can be executed through on-site facilities or by contracting with childcare providers. Employees typically appreciate this benefit since it is simple to understand and easy for them to access. From a tax perspective, in-kind child care services are generally not considered taxable income for employees, so they have no increased tax burden with this option. For employers, the costs can be high if they provide on-site care. Even a child care business can have the costs of having to engage additional staff to accommodate employees' children. If choosing to offer care for your employees at your child care business, you'll want to consider the impacts the additional costs will have on your operations. 
If you are offering on-site care, you may be eligible for tax credits to offset some of these costs if 30% or more of the children cared for are employees. In this case, the employer may be eligible for tax credits related to the expenses of operating a child care facility. The credit, known as the Employer Provided Child Care Credit, Form 8882, offers a percentage of the expenses incurred in operating a qualified child care facility. It is important to note that while the costs of providing free or reduced cost care for employees are deductible, the actual discount itself is not. For example, let's say Claudia owns a small center. She provides free care to her 10 employees. If she normally charges $1,444.50 per month, the benefit means she's potentially losing $14,445 per month in revenue. However, she cannot deduct this loss. She can deduct the cost of her operations, such as paying teachers, food, transportation, etc. And don't worry about de minimis benefits. In the context of employer-provided child care, the concept of de minimis benefits refers to any benefit that is so small as to make accounting for it unreasonable or administratively impractical. The IRS generally excludes de minimis benefits from an employee's taxable income. However, the application of this concept can be quite specific and depends on the circumstances. Here's how it might apply in scenarios related to employer-provided child care, occasional babysitting or emergency child care, small, infrequent benefits, such as snacks or limited child care subsidies. Each of these methods offers unique advantages and challenges. Dependent care FSAs provide tax efficiency and flexibility, but can be complicated and costly. Direct payments offer simplicity and immediate support, but are taxable. And in-kind services can incur costs for the employer, but are deductible, and for employees, tax-free. Child care business owners should consider their specific circumstances, employee needs, and organizational capabilities when choosing the best approach. For more information, visit the DECAL Thriving Child Care Business Academy website. If you have questions about the Academy, send them to the email address on the screen. And be sure to visit the Civitas Strategies YouTube channel for more valuable resources to support you and your business.